Well, a brutal day for the averages. I want to talk about a group that's been getting hammered for the past few weeks. It's the cruise lines. Take Carnival, CCL. Roughly three weeks ago, the world's largest cruise line reported a solid quarter. Management gave cautious guidance. Stock's been getting slammed ever since. It's down about 12% from its recent highs. Now, there are a bunch of things weighing on Carnival here. Cruise ships consume tons of tons of fuel. So the run-up in oil, even if it abated somewhat today, hasn't been good for the bottom line. But the stock also supports a 3.4% yield, which means it gets less attractive. As long-term interest rates rise, you know, you can get 3 0.2 percent from risk-free tenure, but this company now sells for less than 13 times next year's earnings estimates. It's incredibly cheap if you believe they can even come close to making the numbers. So could it be worth bottom fishing on a high-quality blue-chip travel-related entity? Let's check in with Arnold Donald. He's the president and CEO of Carnival. Learn more about how his company's doing. Where it's headed, Mr. Donald. Welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Good to see. Have a seat. Always good to, good to be with you. All right. Now, uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on is because I think you have a lot of perspective. And you've been through some tough times with Carnival, but you turned it around. You get a day like today. Do people's attitudes change toward doing what they do before a big decline? Well, I would hope that one day does not a trend line make. Right. And I know this is mad money. Today was kind of sad money. Right. But, you know, in general, <laughs> I don't think um, you know, we'll have to see what the markets do. But for our business, for the cruise industry, the reality is, you know, we're global. Right. And, you know, we are a great value, uh, much better value than uh, land-based vacations. And so we're attractive um, in almost any environment. And we say, oh, full, we have no correlation to economic trends. Right. None. It's a secular growth trend. Now, you have a terrible hurricane happening in Florida. Now it's the panhandle. I happen to live there. And we know, and you're, you're from the South. You know that this, there are different regions. Right. That, would this be something that people would cancel the trips for in the Caribbean? No, I don't think anybody would cancel trips. Even okay. last year when the hurricanes were in the Caribbean versus right. the panhandle, they didn't cancel their trips um, unless it was just on a port they couldn't get to to get to the ship. Um, but the reality is that every year there's hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones somewhere in the world, you know, and we've been in this business for 45-plus years. Um, you know, hurricanes are just something that happens. Right. Uh, we sail to over... You know, 700 ports around the world. We have 106 ships. We had two or three ships that has some minor rerouting. But for our business, it's not a major impact. Okay, you've beaten in, in the quarter, quarter after quarter after quarter <laughs> since we see you last. You beat it again. But people are shadow boxing with you. They're saying, listen, there are too many <laughs> ships coming on. And what will end up happening is, is that you won't be able to charge as much and not that many people will come to Carnival. But that has not been the case. No, it hasn't been the case, Jim. You're right. We set a record in our last quarter, um, the biggest quarter in the history of the company. We've had consecutive years. We raised earnings, um, expectations, et cetera. So all that's true. Our business is very strong. Um, where we do have capacity increases, as we shared in the quarterly call, right. um, in, in many places we have capacity increases. Prices are strong. We're ahead on bookings. So there really isn't a big correlation uh, to capacity either. But there is general concern. Right. So the analysts are concerned that the business is cyclical. Right. And we've been on a run for quite a while, so they're concerned, you know, that we eventually are going to see a turn in the cycle. And then they're concerned that the capacity could help create that. Right. And then they're concerned if they see any slowdown in rate of growth or whatever uh, in yields, which is just ticket price, right. uh, then they get concerned. And so things, things happen. We try to educate. We try to inform. But in the end, we just need to deliver. And if we continue to deliver, eventually the market will recognize the value and reward us for us. Uh, there is a, an issue with fuel. And I also know that the government, you know, there's these new rules about sulfur in 2020. I mean, these are things that seems like they are a burden to any cruise line. Well, um, first of all, the general fuel, fuel prices go up and down, even though oil companies can't predict fuel prices. Right. And so uh, that's just part of the business. But I think analysts are smart enough to neutralize fuel and currency and see that. That's one-time stuff. It can go either way. Concerning 2020, uh, the reality is that more than likely, we'll have to wait and see what happens, right. but more than likely, uh, bunker fuel will become much less expensive. Right. And we've added exhaust gas cleaning systems on our fleet so they can burn bunker fuel and actually put out less emissions than they were burning a higher-grade fuel. Okay. And so in the end, we should be positioned if there's a drop in bunker fuel, we should be in position to take advantage of that. And that would be more of a permanent shift in price 
versus the volatility that you normally get right. with fuel prices. Right. Well, and this question I have to do it because you're here. It's really okay. important. You've experienced some real crises at your company, and you went right through them. There are people right now at home who are saying, why are we talking cruise? We have a genuine crisis in the stock market. Mm -hmm. What lesson do you have for people having been through crises that almost no other CEO I know has been through and came out on the other side? I would just say, look, um, you have to look at the fundamentals. And uh, once again, there could be ups and downs and peaks and valleys. But in the end, I always had a strong business to build on. When I came into the job, the business, the foundations were solid. We had passionate employees, 120,000 of them. Guests were having a time in their life on our ships. Our ships were safe and sound. And so that's the foundation I had to build on, and I just built on it. And I, I, I'm not a market expert, right. but I would say, you know, one day does not a trend line make. And the fundamentals in the U.S. economy and the world economy for the long term is what we have to look at. Panic ever helped make a decision better? <laughs> Panic has never helped make a decision better. No, just Well, you know, I'm glad to have you on the show today because you, you have been, and anyone knows this bad, knows that, you know, we had some accidents, had some tough things, but what a turnaround. And because steady hand and rational thinking and long-term view. That's Arnold Donnelly, the president and CEO of Carnival Corporation, a stock that I've liked ever since he became the CEO. May have money's back after the break. Thank you. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from May have Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.